So welcome to this exciting video guys in which we are gonna discuss with you two very popular fragrances from the Parisian niche brand that receives a lot of attention at the moment and is called BDK Parfums. And these are of course Rouge Smoking and Gris Chanel. So let's find out if the hype around them is worth it and if you have any experience with BDK Parfums or these particular ones, feel free to share it in the commentary section and of course give this video a thumbs up if you like watching reviews on popular niche fragrances feel free to subscribe to my channel if you're here for the first time or haven't subscribed yet and if you want to support me even more then please check out my patreon page and you can also donate coffees on buy me coffee website links to those platforms you'll find down below in the description box and without further ado let's get started with rouge smoking and grita chanel Hi guys, welcome to this exciting video that some of you requested because um, you were interested. What do you think about for smoking and Gris Chanel that um, are very hyped at the moment and uh, I am very grateful for having the opportunity to talk about them because I received these fragrances from the online niche boutique called So Avantgarde that not only offers BDK perfumes but many other interesting niche brands that I like, for example, like Tiziana Terenzi or Quinto Canto. So I will leave the link to their official website down below in the description box and you can check that out. And with that being said, today we are gonna do a double review, well I will, on Rouge Smoking and Gris Chanel. These fragrances are discussed by many reviewers and even I was interested in them, so today we will look into Rouge Smoking as the first one and this is the presentation by the way guys, so it's simple but at the same time it's stylish. On the box you actually get the whole list of um, the notes in the fragrance and on the side there is even the pronunciation tip but that doesn't really help me because you know French is not my strength but whatever I'm still excited for this fragrance I really really like this bottle because it feels extra heavy and this cap is amazing because it closes the bottle securely and the juice is very appealing to me because red is one of my most favorite colors and by the way I'm wearing this and the other fragrance on my wrists but I just want to refresh and spray it once again and of course from the opening you get um, this whole cherry deliciousness because uh, as top notes in here we have pink pepper and cherry that are very prominent it's not this um, cherry syrup, if you know what I'm talking about. It's not a harsh cherry note. It even smells like cherry tobacco to me, like shisha or something. And it's funny because there is no tobacco in the notes. So maybe that is actually tonka bean that acts that way because it has a little bit of this cherry nuance to it. But I get a lot of sweetness too from vanilla, from heliotrope that makes it extra powdery and works well with violet. Other than that, there is orange blossom, white musk, cashmere, labdanum, and bergamot in the opening. So overall, I would describe it as a beautiful, not too sweet, yet delicious cherry fragrance that is on the dark side and I like that, probably that's why I have this association with tobacco that makes it extra luxurious and you know there are kind of like many layers in this fragrance. In the opening it is fruity, juicy, bright, sparkling but later it turns sweeter, definitely powderier and there is even this woodsy tobacco element that once again I think comes from tonka bean. So I would say that this is a very luxurious smelling gourmand fragrance that is not very edible. You know, I've already created a top list of edible fragrances that smell like food. This one is not quite like that. It smells rather like a beautiful, sweet fragrance with this sexy cherry on top. You know, like um, on the cake, you always want to eat that cherry on top or in a drink. In here, cherry is one of the main players, but at the same time, I get also a lot of vanilla and maybe it's actually vanilla that makes me think about tobacco that um, 
I find is similar in this fragrance as um, it is in Tobacco Vanille from Tom Ford. Um, maybe I'm mistaken, maybe not. I cannot really compare those two, but in the dry down I get even more of that warmth and sweetness, kind of like um, chewy, fruity, sweet tobacco leaves. So it is worth the hype in my personal opinion. It's not overly unique. I've smelled fragrances similar to it, but I really like how the cherry note is presented in here because it's not like a cough syrup. It doesn't smell too childish. It's not too sticky as cherry can be. It's a very beautiful, grown up, very delicious powdery cherry. And since I love not only cherry perfumes but mostly powdery fragrances this is a double pleasure for me so in my opinion it is worth the hype so if you like the notes and you're looking for a great cherry fragrance then this is definitely something that is worth checking out but now i really want to move on to the fragrance that probably is even more popular than for smoking and i know it's hard to imagine that but gris chanel is exactly Exactly that case. Of course, the box is the same. Probably all fragrances from this brand come in the same presentation. And to be honest with you, after smelling these two, I'm very interested in the rest of the line. So feel free to share with me your favorites down below because I'm not sure what should be next that I will smell. Anyway, Gris Chanel. Oh my goodness, in the opening you get a lot of dusty cardamom, so it is delicious, green and spicy. Also, I smell tea in there, which is not like, you know, that leafy green tea that smells just like leaves. This one has a more complexity to it, woodsy um, side and uh, some depth. There is a note of fig in the opening that I don't know, maybe it's there, maybe it's just for the smooth texture, but uh, cardamom and tea, it's like a cardamom tea, basically, and uh, then magic happens because it turns powderier, but not in the sweet, not in the makeup -y way, it's actually dusty, woody, and maybe a little bit rooty. Uh, there is iris, vetiva, sandalwood, and tonka bean in here, and all of that is just like this perfect dusted spicy tea iris magic that is so right up my alley because you know i adore scents in this style and it was not hard for me to fall in love with this fragrance right away and not only i appreciate its gorgeous absolutely deep and sophisticated powderiness but most exciting for me is the very very dry down because it starts to smell like one Kinzo perfume I used to wear in high school that is discontinued and I am so excited that it is similar to it because I associate literally one of the funniest times of my life with that fragrance so this is like a true discovery for me probably my new signature scent and all the hype around it is worth it i wouldn't call it most unique fragrance i've tried because first um, time i smelled it it reminded me of discontinued oris and sandalwood by jo malone but they are not dupes they are just a little bit similar because of iris and if you would like me to compare those two in a separate video just let me know that but i'm very impressed with this because it's so sophisticated and elegant that you could wear it as your signature scent on the daily basis but it is enough to be worn when you're dressed up and you're going out somewhere on a very special occasion actually what's very interesting is that these two go well together so i've been wearing them during the day and they just complete each other on many different levels so the hype around them is real and worth it in my personal opinion and let me know if you agree with me and on that note i have very positive first impressions of bdk perfumes as a brand and once again if if you have any favorites please share them with me in the comments i will be trying to get more of them and if there is something else from this brand you want me to review then just let me know and if there are any questions left i'm here to answer them just uh, comment anything you have on your mind and thank you so much for watching if this video was helpful for you feel free to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel guys that really helps me a lot as well as your donations thanks to which i am always half um, way through 
my goal to purchase Love by Killian. So if everyone who is watching this video um, donates uh, even one coffee, then we'll do that as a team. So all the helpful information down below, check it out, follow me on my social media, check out uh, So Avant-Garde website and uh, that's all from me today. Thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see each other really soon. So stay tuned. Bye guys! Thank you.